This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Danielle Salazar. And I'm Natalie Gomez. Last spring, dozens of college sports and athletic competitions were canceled as the COVID-19 pandemic began affecting the United States. But even with a year away from the competition stage, one group of Texas Tech athletes made a triumphant return in the national spotlight. Over the weekend, Tech's Palm and Cheer squads, along with Raider Red, competed in the annual National Cheerleader Association and National Dance Alliance Championships in Daytona Beach, Florida. On Friday, the Palm squad competed in the Palm and Jazz competitions and won first place in both events. The Cheer squad also competed in fr on Friday and came in second place in the nation. But the biggest surprise of the weekend happened on Saturday, as Raider Red won the top prize in the mascot competition for the first time in school history. Raider Red took home the trophy by edging out Sam Houston State Sammy the Bearcat by just under two points. After this weekend's victories, the Palm Squad has won six national championships in the last four competitions with two wins in Jazz in 2017 and 2018, and two in Palm in 2018 and 2019. The cheer team was also the reigning national champions coming into Friday's event. In other news, the COVID-19 situation in Lubbock County continues to improve after another week of low case numbers and rapidly growing amount of vaccinations. On Friday, Lubbock health officials reported 10 new cases of the coronavirus. The report also included two new recoveries, bringing the number of active cases slightly up to 128. There were also no deaths reported in Friday's report. For the week, Lubbock County averaged just over 11 new cases of COVID-19 per day, and over the previous two weeks, health officials have reported an average of 10 cases each afternoon. But one of the biggest highlights in the daily reports have been the lack of COVID-19 related deaths. The last week, only one death was reported on Thursday afternoon, and that was also the first death reported since March 22nd. With Thursday's announcement, Lubbock County has now reported 724 coronavirus deaths since last March. Here on campus, there were no additional reports of COVID-19 on Friday, but there have been six new cases of COVID-19 reported since last Monday. Even with last week's new cases, that's only half of the previous week's 13 positive tests reported by campus officials. As of today, Texas Tech has reported 227 cases of COVID-19 since faculty and staff returned to campus in January. Advanced registration for summer and fall classes here at Texas Tech started at the beginning of April. In-person summer classes here on campus are still a little hard to find, but there is another option for instruction during the summer months that will give students a little taste of normalcy. Last month, the Texas Tech Office of International Affairs announced that study abroad would resume this summer. Students have had the chance to apply to be part of study abroad throughout the school year, but all trips had been canceled since last March. But starting in May, students will begin traveling the world again, with a few changes still in effect due to COVID-19. So we definitely recognize that the experience may be different than what a student was anticipating as part of their study abroad experience. You know, if they had a picture in their mind of what this opportunity was going to look like, it may be different now because of the COVID precautions. And that's something to definitely think about. The original deadline to apply for summer study abroad courses was March 22nd, but the study abroad office has extended deadlines on several of this year's trips. If you would like to learn more about study abroad options this summer, as well as opportunities for fall 2021 and future semesters, visit studyabroad.ttu.edu. It was a beautiful weekend here on the South Plains with a couple days of sunshine and warm weather. Highs topped out at above 70 degrees on Saturday, and yesterday we saw temperatures climb into the high 80s. But it looks like there could be some changes in store as we head into the second full week of April. MCTV's Madison Harton joins us in the studio with the latest look at the forecast. Madison? Thanks, Natalie. Well, it is true, Texas Tech, we saw a beautiful weekend over the last few days with the nice, warm, temperate spring-like conditions. But we have some more spring-like conditions coming up soon, but it is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be seeing some chillier temperatures again. We're going to possibly be seeing some precipitation and, of course, here in West Texas, the wind. For today, our high temperature climbed all the way up to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, so a little bit chillier than it was yesterday. With cloudy and windy conditions, that wind is coming from the northeast at 20 to 30 miles per hour. That wind is 
going to continue into this evening, but it is going to get a little bit less intense. Coming from the northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour, a lot more manageable, with partly cloudy and cool conditions with a low temperature of 43. Now, looking at the South Plains as a whole for this evening, we actually do have some slight chances of precipitation out there, out there to the east of us around the Spur and Aspermont area. We're going to be seeing a 20% chance of rain, which I think is all we're going to be seeing here on the South Plains for this evening, but we have some chances of rain coming up in our forecast for later this week, so we can have that to hold on. I know everyone's hoping for a little bit of rain in our forecast. Now, looking at the South Plains as a whole for tomorrow, we are going to be seeing some warmer temperatures out there with a temperature of 65 over at Childress. That's going to be our warmest temperature here on the South Plains, and a a little bit warmer too out there at Aspermont at 64, but a little bit chillier than we have been over the last few days. We all know temperatures can vary a lot on the South Plains in springtime. We saw it be 80 and 70 over the weekend, and now we're dropping back down in the 50s and 60s for the next few days, possibly. Looking into our lower temperatures for tomorrow, we can see that our coolest temperature is going to be out there at Friona, dropping back down in the 30s again, with a low temperature of 39 degrees, so albeit a little bit chilly, but nothing compared to Snowmageddon of two months ago. We're not going to be seeing any temperatures dip down to freezing, at least personally, I don't think Think we're going to be seeing any more freezing temperatures for the rest of the season. Now, we are going to be experiencing some chances of severe weather here on the South Plains. You can see that we are in the light green area. That means that we're possibly going to be seeing some rain showers for our area, possibly some thunderstorms. Down there in the Houston area of Texas and Louisiana are, is where they're going to be seeing probably some more chances of rain out there. There's probably going to be experiencing a little bit more in the thunderstorm category. But again, we still have some chances of precipitation here out in West Texas. Bringing it back into Lubbock locally, we can see that for Tuesday, it is going to be a little bit sunny and a little bit windy out there. With a high temperature of 61, low of 44, and a northeasterly wind coming at 15 to 25 miles per hour with higher wind gusts possible. For Wednesday, we're finally going to be seeing some, sub some substantial rainfall te chances here on the South Plains with a 60% chance of rain for Wednesday with a high of 53, low of 43, and a northeasterly wind coming at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For Wednesday, the clouds are going to start to be rolling in around the afternoon area and around later in the days when we're going to start to see that 60% chance of rain, but those are going to continue into Thursday where in the morning we're going to be seeing cloudy conditions with a 50% chance of rain for the area. High of 55, low of 49, and a southeasterly wind coming at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now, spring can be a crazy time here on the South Plains, and it it has been really interesting to be seeing all the varying temperatures, seeing it go from 80 yesterday going back down into the 50s for the rest of the week. So it is going to be interesting to see how this plays out, and hopefully we'll see some rain in our forecast here on the South Plains because we are still in a bit of a drought. That is all for MCTV Weather. I'm Madison Harton. Back to you, Natalie. Thanks, Madison. The Texas Tech baseball team headed into this past week with their second longest losing streak of the season two games. That may not sound like much, but for one of the top 10 teams in the nation, it was a big disappointment since both losses came from an unranked Kansas State team. But Tech was ready to right the ship as they headed into another top-ranked matchup with TCU. The Red Raiders started out this weekend's action on Friday evening at Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park. Unfortunately, things didn't start well with the Horn Frogs putting up six runs in the first inning. Pitcher Micah Dallas got things under control from there, following up with three scoreless innings, but the damage was already done. TCU would go on to score one more run in the fifth and keep Tech's bats quiet the rest of the game to earn a 7-3 victory. But with Friday's loss extending the Red Raiders' losing streak to three, the team kicked into gear on Saturday. Tech put up the first run on the board, and they kept things even, matching TCU's four runs in the fourth. TCU put up one more run in the sixth, and three more scoreless frames sent the game into extra innings. In the top of the tenth, Ryan Sublet shout out the Horn Frogs, setting up for a chance for a walk-off ending by the Red Raiders. Redshirt freshman Cal Conley took that challenge and hit a walk-off home run to end the game 6-5. With the series on the line, Tech went into yesterday's closer with hopes of scoring their second conference victory in front of the home crowd. And the Red Raiders did just that, putting up 17 runs off 13 hits. Five of those runs came off of three hits by freshman Jace Young. Young knocked it out of the park to start the game, and then he put up two more home runs in the sixth inning. The Red Raiders scored five more runs in the sixth before the game was called in the seventh giving Tech their third run rule victory this year. The Red Raiders are now getting ready for a midweek series with Stephen F. Austin here at home. The series is the first set of midweek dates for the team since early March. 
Tech will take on SFA in a two-game matchup starting at 6.30 p.m. first pitch tomorrow night, followed by a 1 p.m. start on Wednesday. Both games will be available through Big 12 now on ESPN+. The Red Raider baseball team may have found a way to get back in the win column this weekend, but unfortunately, the women's softball team didn't have as much luck as they continued into their third conference matchup in as many weeks. Texas Tech met up with the number 12 rank Oklahoma State Cowgirls this weekend at Rocky Johnson Field. The Red Raiders came into the series with a six-game losing streak after dropping their first two Big 12 matchups against Baylor and Texas. The team started with a competitive outing on Friday, losing 0-1, but on Saturday and Sunday, the Cowgirls racked up 22 runs on the 22 hits while holding Tech to just five runs in 18 innings. The Red Raiders lost 2-12 in Saturday's game and 3-10 in the closer on Sunday. The Red Raiders will now pack up their bags and head north this weekend as they face off against the Kansas Jayhawks in Lawrence. The Jayhawks are currently sitting at 1-5 in the conference, and Tech may have a chance to find victory after facing three of the top four teams in the Big 12. This weekend action starts off at 6 p.m. on Friday, followed by a 2 p.m. first pitch on Saturday, and a noon start this Sunday. The weekend series doesn't appear to be broadcast, but you can always keep up with the latest stats and scores by visiting texastech.com. Activity and event options for students have slowly increased this spring as COVID-19 numbers have dropped and many restrictions have been reduced. There are still not as much activity on campus as normal, but one university group is hosting regular events to give students here in Lubbock something to do between classes and homework. MCTV's Claire Sigmund has a look at one option from last week that lets students get a little creative and take home a furry friend. Last week, the Student Activities Board hosted the Stuff a Critter event for students to participate in as they pass by between classes. At the Stuff a Critter event, students were given the option to create their own stuffed tiger, polar bear, or monkey to take home with them. I was sitting down and I saw them moving the, the tigers around and then I saw a few girls approach the table. So that's what it gave me the incentive to actually go to the table. And so I went up to the, to the students and they were just saying that they were giving up the Build-A-Bears. Sophomore Juliana Gonzalez says the event was a great way to engage students and encourage creativity. They gave me a bag to fill up the, the teddy bear. Um, and so I got creative because they, like I said, they gave us the stuffing, but they didn't really give you anything to like poke at it. Uh, so I grabbed a pen that they had given us and I just started filling up, filling up the tiger. The COVID-19 pandemic has prevented multiple campus organizations from hosting in-person events. Student Activities Board member Blake Connell says that the organization has recently started hosting events again in effort to bring a sense of normalcy back to student life. We've been doing a lot more on-campus events than many organizations. Um, this is our first semester kind of coming back and doing really on-campus events. It's a great way to bring people out and have them get involved, kind of getting back to the norm um, on campus and, and just seeing what we have available. Alumni Diana Atenga says in-person events have brought a new sense of hope in the midst of a pandemic. I feel like I've seen a good amount of organizations out just like trying to interact with students um, because it's pretty disconnected right now with COVID. So I think they're doing a good job. I, it's nice to see more people coming out because the weather is getting warmer. So I hope that continues to happen. Although creating a stuffed animal was a quick and easy process, Gonzalez says it provided a nice break from the chaos of classes. I really do feel like it's, uh, like you had mentioned, like a mental break for the students or just, like I said, I mean, who would expect to be building like a bear by themselves? Um, that was something that I had never even thought of. So it really did take away um, my mind from like work and from just doing classes in general. So it's, it's a great way to just distract yourself for a bit. For more information on the Student Activities Board, visit sab.ttu.edu. For MCTV, I'm Claire Sigmund. So Natalie, have you found ways like Stuff the Critter event to pass the time during the semester? Oh, for sure. Even though a lot of things are still virtual, um, many campus organizations and um, activities are still going on, so it's been fun to attend those. What about you? Yes, I'm definitely enjoying the more in-person events that are becoming more available. Well, that's all for the today's edition of MCTV's Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday.